Welcome to Photo Editing Sessions. I'm Raita Arkiri. In this episode, I'm going to show you my workflow for working with Luminance Mask. Luminance Mask are selections of specific tonal ranges that allow you to give you more dynamic range depending on which image you layer mask the tonal range. So for Luminance Mask, I take multiple images of one scene. So one exposure will be underexposed, one exposure will be overexposed, and one exposure will have a kind of a, a middle or mid-tone exposure, balance exposure. So this, the underexposed exposure is for the sky, this one's for the foreground, and this one's for any other parts that I might need it for. I'm going to start off by processing the the mid-tone balance exposure. So I'm going to enable lens profile corrections, remove chromatic aberrations, and then I'm going to increase the shadows to around 25, and then increase the contrast to around 40. All right, then I'm gonna adjust the white balance by increasing the color sliders and then adjusting the temperature until the sky is balanced with blue and yellow. I'm gonna slide the temperature until it's balanced and then I'm gonna use the tint and add some more magenta. I'm going to reset the color sliders. And I'm also going to use an adjustment brush to increase the exposure and the contrast of the waterfall and some of these foreground elements. So you can't really see it good right here, but I'm going to select all the images first and synchronize all of them. And for the settings, I'm going to select everything and press OK. So I want all the settings synchronized, so that just made all the settings the same. So I'm going to use the adjustment brush, and now I can see the foreground better in the overexposed frame, and I'm going to paint it along the waterfall and these little seaweed or moss um, in the foreground. I'm going to reduce the contrast a little bit and increase the exposure a bit more. Also I want a little bit more shadows and clarity. I'm going to increase the brush size a little bit and then just go along here. And then I'm going to hold down the Alt button and have the flow around 28. And then I'm going to erase some of these parts that you kind of can see the increased exposure. Okay, now I'm going to synchronize everything again. So I just want to synchronize the local adjustments. So I'm going to press OK. Then all of those are synchronized. Okay, finally I'm going to go down to the sky layer and get rid of the, um, the highlight clipping. So the, the increased contrast caused the the sky to clip. So I'm going to use the white slider and reduce that until there are no clipped clipping. A little bit more. Okay, that's good. Alright, now I'm ready to open the files in Photoshop.
Once they're open in Photoshop, I'm going to go to File, Scripts, and Load Files into Stack. So I want all these layers to be in one file. I'm going to press OK, add the open files, make sure these aren't checked. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is drag the, the overexposed layer to the bottom. I want the underexposed layer on the top. Okay, now I'm going to start working with Luminance Mask. So with these Luminance Mask, there's an action that you can download online. I'll put a link below in the description. But basically it's an action that creates channels of different tonal ranges for you. So I'm going to press play selection of the action and notice how it selects different tonal ranges and then puts them in the channels for you. So you can see brights 1 has a large range of brightness and then this uh, selects more selective brights 2 Brights 3 is, is even more selective. So as it's going down or up to bright, the brightness 5, that's the bright 6 is the brightest parts of the image. And then the same thing with darks 1. So everything that's white is the darks. And then it goes to darker and then darker. So these are the darkest parts of the image. And then the midtones. So it selects a range of midtones for you. But for this image, I'm gonna select some of the bright part of the area. So I think I want brights three. So I'm gonna select brights three by holding down Control and then clicking on the thumbnail. And then I'm gonna layer mask, have the underexposed layer selected and then I'm going to press add layer mask. Alright, that just layer masked everything except the bright, brighter part of the images. So notice how if I um, disable the visibility of this layer, it, you can see how the, the m balanced layer has some of the sky too bright. So with the luminance mask, I was able to select the bright parts of the image on the underexposed layer and bring it in. And you can see how everything that's white or gray is what is visible. So the bright part of the cloud is visible, making the, the dynamic range increased. All right, for the next layer, I'm going to select the balanced layer frame. And then I also want to do brights 2. So I'm going to select brights 2. And then go back to the um, layers and layer mask that one. All right, so the foreground got um, fixed. The foreground got hidden, all the shadows were hidden now, but now I'm having a problem with the sky being too flat and bright, it just looks ugly. So to fix that I'm just going to use a brush, a soft brush, and I'm going to start brushing white onto the layer. Make sure the opacity is, is at 100. And then I'm going to brush the white onto the clouds to bring back the layer. I want to be careful not to uh, brush onto the foreground because it'll make an obvious dark spot like that. Then holding down Alt and clicking on the layer mask to check it, make sure everything is brushed in. So that's finished with the luminous mask, and now I can start doing some.
curves adjustments. First I'm going to fix the crop. I want to make sure the horizon is straight. Okay, I'm noticing that some of the foreground is a little bit too dark. So I'm going to create a curves and adjustments layer above the the foreground layer. So I'm just going to increase the exposure of the shadows a little bit and a little bit of the midtones. I'm going to press control I to make that layer mask black and then paint in whatever I want to be brighter. So I th actually think I want almost everything to be a little bit brighter. Okay, you can see the before and after. All right, the next thing I want to do is increase some of the contrast of the water. So I'm going to create a curves adjustments above the all the layers and then select a dark part of the water somewhere around here and then a bright part. Then I'm just going to do a simple S curve and notice how that the color got affected from the contrast increase the increasement of contrast affected the color but I don't want it to affect the color so I'm going to go to the blending mode and select luminosity so that was at the bottom you're not going to see that but it was at the bottom, all the way at the bottom. And when I select luminosity, it won't affect the color of the image below. I'm going to control I that, the layer mask, and then just brush in the parts that I want to be affected. So just some of the foreground and the waterfall. Alright, one more thing. I want to decrease the brightness of some of these areas in the sky and the foreground right here. It's a little too bright, so I'm going to use a curves adjustment and select the brightest part of the image somewhere around there, and then I'm going to bring down the brightness of some of the highlights and midtones. I'm going to invert the mask and then use a brush to paint on what I want to be uh, less bright. So the before and after. And also for some of the sky I want to decrease the brightness so I'm going to do a 30% opacity and then paint along some of the bright part of the sky. So before and after. So I'm going to show you the whole image process. So this is the overexposed image and then the midtones brought some of the sky in and some of the that area, the foreground, and then the underexposed layer brought in detail to the sky. And then I used a curves adjustment to increase the brightness of the foreground and then use a curves adjustment to increase the contrast of the waterfall and foreground. And then finally I used a curves adjustment to decrease the brightness of some of the foreground and the sky. 
Alright, thanks for watching this video. Subscribe and like for more.